Welcome everyone. Are you studying kanji? Do you find it complicated or hard? Have you ever wondered what's the point of learning how to write kanji if I know how to say the word in Japanese? And also, if I know how to write the word in hiragana, why do I need to know the kanji for the word? This is normal and I also used to think like that when I started learning kanji. While kanji may not appear important at first, you have to understand kanji if you want to master Japanese. Why? Because if you don't learn or know kanji, it's going to make learning way much slower. I'm not saying that you cannot learn Japanese without mastering kanji, but studying kanji will undoubtedly help you grasp the language better. Also, as you improve your Japanese language skills, you'll notice that it's easier to read text with kanji than text with just hiragana and katakana. So, in this video, I would like to share some tips for learning kanji that I've personally found to be effective and easy to follow. For the first one, embrace the way you learn best. Although this may seem strange, knowing your own learning style can make learning kanji easier. When you are taught using a method that aligns with your own learning style, you will tend to understand the material better and retain the information for a longer period. Do you find yourself having to join down notes or make sketches? Can you absorb information when you hear it but don't see it? Recognizing your learning style and selecting learning activities that fit it will help you learn kanji more effectively. If you are a visual learner, reading and flashcards will work well for you. If you are kinesthetic, writing out kanji on paper will help, as well as using multiple exercise types. If you are an auditory learner, reading aloud will benefit you. As for me, I can absorb information more by writing it down with a pen or writing stroke orders by moving my hand on the table. There's no one right way to learn. Whatever works for you, works for you. The next is learn Joyo Kenji. As I've already talked about, one should first study hiragana, katakana, radicals, and stroke orders for kanji learning in my previous video. I hope you are familiar with this. If you aren't, you can check out this video. In this video, I would like to talk about the importance of Joyo Kanji. Joyo Kanji refers to a commonly used kanji in Japanese society. This is the kind of kanji that is taught to children in Japan. Studying Joyo Kanji is a great way to start learning kanji. Kenshudo is a great website for practicing Joyo Kanji as the lessons will take you through kanji and some common words. The website is excellent at teaching kanji since it has lessons and games for it. It's also good for learning vocabulary. It has vocabulary lists from the GLPT and the most common words. Other features include lessons for people of all levels, flashcards, functions to help you study kanji and vocabulary according to the GLPT level, a comprehensive work dictionary, and a component-based kanji lookup system. When you start reading Japanese newspapers, science, books, and other reading materials, knowing this title of kanji will come in handy. While you'll still have to look at kanji that you don't understand, you'll at least be familiar with a few popular kanji that will help you read more quickly. It might even help you guess the meaning of words you don't understand. The third tip will be learn kanji in words and in the context of a sentence. In general, don't strive to learn the onyomi or kunyomi readings of individual kanji. Don't approach kanji as mere memorization of individual characters. Understand the meaning, radicals, and components of kanji. Recognize how kanji are combined to form words and grasp their context and usage within sentences. Simply learning the meaning and readings of kanji characters without understanding their usage in words and phrases can limit your comprehension. Study vocabulary and phrases that incorporate kanji to reinforce their practical application. For example, let's take this kanji, whose onyomi is gaku and the konyomi is manabu. Use the kanji in sentences to see how it functions within a context. For example, gakkou ni ikuno ga suki desu. I like going to school. Watashi wa rekishi wo manabu. I study history. When practicing sentences, try to use simple kanji and stick to the ones you've already learned. Moving on to that is, don't be afraid to forget. Avoid learning a lot of kanji all at once. Just start small and stay persistent. Don't feel bad if you can remember every single one you've studied and don't be afraid to forget. There's just too much stuff for you to remember. 
but you'll encounter what you need to remember anyway. So just don't bother redoing this if you found this the second, third or fourth time. Remembering kanji is quite challenging for me too. But one tool that's been a total game changer for me is the Mochi Kanji Learn Japanese app. For those who haven't heard about this software, keep watching to learn more. If you're already familiar with it or using it, feel free to share your opinions and feedbacks. It's a fantastic space repetition app designed to help you master and remember kanji in the most efficient way possible. Mochi Kanji helps you pick the best starting course based on your current level and objectives. You can choose courses that interest you or match your skill level. After selecting your level, you pick the textbook you are using. Based on these choices, the app will recommend the most suitable course for you. The app uses a unique golden time feature based on spaced repetition, where individuals review lessons at increasing intervals to memorize information. And it helps you memorize over 1000 kanji and vocabulary in just one month. It determines the best times for you to review based on your learning history, sending reminders to maximize retention. Your learned vocabulary is categorized into five levels, from newly learned to long-term memory, ensuring thorough understanding. You can check each word's level in the digital notebook. With hundreds of lessons and over 8,000 words in kanji, the app covers all vocabulary and kanji from N5 to N2 for GLPT exams and general communication, along with specialized courses like IT, services, and nursing. Each level has 800 to 900 kanji and vocabulary, divided into small lessons of about 10 words each. The app features flashcards with furigana, audio, images, and example sentences. It includes quizzes for each new word to aid memorization, and reviewing games to reinforce learning. When your countdown timer turns zero, you will have a review lesson, in which you revise all your learned words thoroughly in the form of understanding, listening, and writing. New features allow you to skip known words and practice stroke orders during lessons. If you are fond of writing kanji, don't miss the kanji write tab, where you can practice kanji by each stroke order. You can also engage in daily conversations with characters Mochi and Michi to improve communication skills. Konbanwa. Onamaewa. The search tab lets you look up Japanese kanji and words using kana, romaji, or kanji. Additionally, participating in monthly events at Mochi events can earn gifts. There is also a Mochi garden that helps maintain your learning routine and motivation by allowing you to plant and care for virtual trees based on your learning goals. Whether you're just starting out with Japanese or are aiming for advanced levels, Mochi Kenji adapts to your pace and keeps you motivated. This app has also made my study sessions more productive and enjoyable. The app is available on the App Store, Google Play Store, and the website, and you can download it by searching for Mochi Kenji Learn Japanese. The next tip will be find the alternatives. In any case, if applications aren't for you, Comprehensible kanji learning books and websites are a good alternative. Even if you aren't studying to take the GLPT, using a GLPT book close to your level can be beneficial. Hundreds of kanji displaying stroke order and strategies to the core kanji are included in these books. Some even utilize visuals to aid in memorization the kanji. As for me, I use Nihongo Challenge. This book gives you a chance to practice writing each kanji six times during the initial lesson and more during the practice sessions at the end of each unit. Showing the original pictorial idea behind each of the kanji symbols helps you understand why the kanji are the way they are. Besides mini quizzes, there are longer Sogo Renshu tests, one for units 1 to 11 and another for units 1 to 20. These tests include more complex questions with tables, diagrams, and light reading, not just multiple choice questions. It's an excellent book for true beginners, offering an engaging and intelligent way to learn kanji, especially for visual learners. Other books like Remembering the Kanji, a full course on how not to forget the meaning and writing of Japanese characters, and kanji pictographics are also great. I've also added links to some great websites for learning kanji in my description box. The final tip will be read, read, and read. 
Most importantly, reading is fundamental to learning any language. You must be able to read and write regardless of where you are from or what language you speak. Consequently, the only way to get better at reading and writing is to do more of it. Therefore, if you want to learn more kanji and boost your memorization of the ones you've already known, you should read Japanese more often. You might be saying, I can't, I don't know enough kanji, or it's too hard, I have to translate everything. Both of which may be true to some extent. You may not recognize all of the kanji you come across, but the goal is to motivate yourself to learn more about kanji and understand how they're used in writing. Of course, reading Japanese will be difficult for you at first, but if you keep doing it, you will be exceptional at it. Tadoku is a great website to practice reading as it provides dozens of free simple picture books for students of Japanese. The site is all in Japanese, but don't worry, it's not hard to navigate. For a beginner Japanese reading material, look for those marked with the blue color, level zero. Click on the book cover that catches your attention then you can enjoy your reading. Another truly wonderful site for reading at any level is Yomu JP. The texts are categorized based on GLPT levels and 5 being the easiest and 1 the most advanced. There's also a N6 level which is the easiest and suitable for beginners who have just learned hiragana. There are a couple of things I love about this site. Firstly, plenty of pictures to keep it interesting and help your comprehension. Secondly, it uses kanji with furigana or pronunciation guides in hiragana, even from the very basic levels. This means you will gradually get accustomed to seeing kanji and it hopefully won't be such a big setup when you start learning them. If you prefer reading manga and you're at N5 level, then start reading material that is intended for children. Yutsubato and Shirokuma Cafe are two mangas that are easy for beginners to read and include kanji reading in them. I hope you found these kanji learning tips helpful and that they make your studies a bit easier. Don't worry if you forget some from time to time. Learning kanji can be challenging, but with a step-by-step -step approach, it can be an enjoyable and rewarding experience. Start by learning the basics, including the radicals and strokes, and then move on to learning the Joyo Kenji characters. Finally, don't forget to leave a comment with your own tips or any questions you have. I love hearing from you. Happy learning, and I'll see you in the next video.